how often do you think about how your food was grown? The breakfast you had this morning was most likely grown with nitrogen fertilizer. There are four billion people today that are dependent on nitrogen fertilizer to grow their food, while at the same time we make that fertilizer using fossil fuels. So if we want to decarbonize our economy and our food system, we have to look at fertilizer. The question that I asked is, can we make sustainable nitrogen fertilizer by engineering plant microbes? I'm Tim Schnabel, and I'm the founder and CEO of Switch Bioworks. I grew up in Germany. I've always loved plants. My uncle at some point when I was very young gave me a banana plant. I tried to keep this alive and slowly accumulated hundreds of house plants. And a really healthy plant that's thriving just gives me a lot of joy. I ended up working in a lab early on and it got me addicted to trying to solve problems with biotechnology. Plants don't have a way to make their own nitrogen fertilizer, but bacteria, microbes, do. So what if we can engineer the microbes that naturally live on the roots of plants to share the nitrogen that they're making for themselves with the plant? When I asked, can we make sustainable nitrogen fertilizer with microbes? My first job was to research what had been tried, what do we know, and where can I make a difference? Switch Bioworks is a biotech startup. We make fertilizer, which is the bedrock of our modern food system. Our mission is to feed the world sustainably. CO2 emissions from fertilizer account for two to five percent of the global emissions. It's a gigaton of CO2 every year. Through intensive agriculture, we have depleted soils of nitrogen around the world. So we have to put the fertilizer in to make up for that nitrogen. And in the US, we put a lot. We put about 200 pounds per acre of nitrogen fertilizer. In Africa, it's six times less. If you can put more fertilizer into the ground, you grow more food. Ammonia, which is the active compound of nitrogen fertilizer, is very hard to make. We currently make it by reacting nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas at about 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit and 400 atmospheres, the Haber-Bosch process. But biology can also make ammonia at room temperature. A few microbes, bacteria, have evolved the capability to make ammonia. And what we do at Switch is engineer those bacteria so that they share that ammonia with plants so that it serves as fertilizer. These are symbiotic natural bacteria. They live naturally on the roots of plants like corn, and we engineer them to send fertilizer over to the plant. We've gone to hundreds of corn fields, pulled up corn plants, and isolated microbes that live on those corn plants. We study them, we sequence their genomes, we look, do they have the nitrogen fixation genes? Not a lot of microbes have that capability, so it's a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. Welcome to the lab. This is where all the magic happens. We harvest the rhizosphere of the corn, which is the root region, and then we isolate the microbes in the lab on plates. Once we have the microbes isolated, we identify them by sequencing. As you can see here, there is a sequencer which gives us the genomic potential of the microbe. We understand whether the microbe is capable of fixing nitrogen. The next step of the process is to do the engineering of the bacteria so that they release the uh, ammonia. If you engineer a bacterium to manufacture ammonia for a plant, that comes at a cost. You're either spending your energy doing what you want to do, grow, thrive, take care of yourself, or you're spending your energy making fertilizer for a plant. That microbe now has to compete with all the native microbes that have not been burdened by ammonia production. So we do it switchably. We program the microbe in a way that it can release ammonia when the time is right. First you invest in growing, and then you invest in production. There's a bee analogy here, okay? If you were to start a bee colony, what those bees do first is invest in growing their colony. They multiply and multiply and multiply. And after they've 10x, then all those bees start making honey. 
And that's the same with micro making fertilizer. First you invest in growing and then you invest in production. So for the first six weeks, microbes that we program behave as if they've not been engineered. The switch is off. The microbes are able to thrive on the roots of plants, and once they've established, then the switch turns on and now they're making fertilizer for the plants. It's very similar to the wires that you have. We have the sensor that Vectra sends when to release the ammonium and then goes through the wire. Then when the signal goes in, you release the ammonia. bacteria had the circuit in them and when the circuit is on the bacteria will be green. So this one has the circuit off and this circuit does have the fluorescent protein being expressed because the circuit is on. After we've put the switches into the microbes and we turn them into a shell stable powder, farmers apply that powder at planting and now we're making fertilizer with nature for nature. Another way to apply the product would be to work with big seed manufacturers to coat the microbes onto the seeds as they're being produced. So this is our grow through. We use this place to test our best microbes in real soil and using corn plants. The plant will release carbon sources in the soil and the bacteria will be attracted because these carbon sources are food for bacteria. So they will attach to the root and in exchange they will give some nitrogen to the plant. So we need a certain amount of cells around the root to be releasing the amount of nitrogen that is needed by a plant to grow health. Making nitrogen fertilizer with microbes has another huge advantage, which is affordability. Fertilizer is the biggest expense in farming today. We are able to make nitrogen at less cost than conventional fertilizer. If we can drop the cost of fertilizer for farmers, that will contribute to food security around the world. We hope to replace 100 pounds of conventional fertilizer with just an ounce of high-tech microbes. You could literally FedEx farmers fertilizer rather than having to drive it there with a huge truck. Quitting is not in my DNA, and perseverance is a big part of our company values. We need to leave a planet for our children that we're proud of. It's gonna be really hard to meet all the commitments on future ambitions if nitrogen fertilizer is not also part of that solution.